Hello, everyone. Um, so my name is Eli Park Sorensen, um, and uh, thanks for watching. So today I'm going to introduce uh, crime fiction, which is one of the um, uh, the courses that we currently teach in the English department at CUHK. Um, and I'm going to talk about um, four things today. Um, the first thing is um, a um, general introduction to the course itself. Um, so what we're going to do and uh, what kind of text we are, we are reading. Um, and um, and then I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna talk about um, what crime fiction is. Uh, I want to give you a uh, a definition um, of crime fiction uh, so that we um, um, have a better sense of, of, of what we are uh, what we are studying. Um, the third thing I want to talk about is the popularity of crime fiction. Why is it that we're so fascinated by crime fiction? <coughs> It is, it is one of the most popular um, genres worldwide. And I think um, it's interesting to look at some of the reasons why this genre, out of all the genres that you can imagine, so science fiction and fantasy, romance and so on, that crime fiction seems to be um, um, the most popular um, genre. And the last thing I wanna talk about uh, is the importance of studying crime fiction. Why is it, uh, why is it important? To, uh, to study this genre. Um, I think it's an important question because oftentimes crime fiction is seen as um, um, a, a more kind of um, an entertain a form of entertainment rather than perhaps um, what you would call high literature uh, in which I guess um, uh, uh, people usually study at university. Uh, so why is it a, a, a um, a genre that we should study at, at university. I want to address that uh, that issue. Um, yeah, so these are the four things that I want to talk about um, today. Um, let me say a few things about um, the course uh, Crime Fiction. It's a fairly uh, new course. Uh, I taught it uh, this semester, uh, the spring semester. Uh, I've taught it before at, at other universities, um, but at CUHK, um, um, this semester was the first time we we taught it, and it's a it's a it's an introductory course, uh, an introductory undergraduate course, uh, open to all students, um, regardless of of, of, of your um, previous uh, educational background. So, if you haven't studied um, literature, uh, let alone crime fiction before, um, this is a course that will introduce you to uh, the main genres. Uh, of crime fiction, so we're gonna uh, we're gonna look at the history of crime fiction, beginning roughly in the mid nineteenth century, um, and then go um, forwards to the twentieth century and the twenty first century. Um, so it's a it's a broad historical survey. We're also gonna look at um, specific case studies um, or subgenres. So we look at um, we look at um, um, golden age detective uh, fiction. Golden age detective fiction was a genre popular in um, primarily in, in, in Britain in the first half of the 20th century, and it's it's a genre which is very narrowly focused around uh, the um, crime and the identification of the uh, of the criminal. Um, uh, it's also called the whodunit uh, narrative. So you find very little um, violence um, uh, in, in, in that one. It, it's, it's all about the, the plot intricacies, really. Um, we also talk about the hard-boiled uh, genre, which is very different. It's, uh, it's an American uh, West Coast genre um, that became popular in the 1920s and uh, 30s and, and 40s. Um, with writers like Dashiell Hammond and uh, and Raymond Chandler, and and the style is a, a lot more dark and um, uh, realistic, um, and uh, there's less focus, uh, I think, on the actual uh, investig investigative work, um, and, and 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 a more sort of elaborate focus on 
um, themes like moral corruption and human weakness um, and so on. So it's a very different um, genre, I think. Um, during the course, we're also talking about um, serial, um, serial murder fiction. Um, we look at historical crime fiction. Um, so historical crime fiction uh, is, a, um, is, is a crime genre that takes place in a different period, um, different from the, the time the story was written. Um, so you could have stories about uh, the medieval age, the Renaissance, um, or even um, uh, 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 a past that is, 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 is uh, uh, very close to our own present, for example, the 1980s or the 1970s. Um, so it's a broad uh, course that includes um, 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 both a historical approach, but also uh, a specific focus on uh, on, on, on um, subgenres within within crime fiction. Uh, we also have a um, uh, a creative writing session. So if you're interested in creative writing, uh, you can um, uh, you, you can you can uh, explore that interest. Uh, we have uh, one of our TAs is uh, Mr. Hadrian Ho, who is also a uh, crime fiction writer and and and. Uh, He'll be able to give you some 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 advice on how to to write a crime story if you're interested in that. Um, some of the texts that we read uh, include Edgar Allan Poe. He's usually seen as the uh, the founder of the crime uh, story, at least in in in, in the modern version or uh, in the modern sense. Um, so we're going to read uh, one of his stories. Um, uh, so this semester we read the Proline Letter, which was published in eighteen. 44, um, and, and we might read that one again or, or one of his other stories. Uh, we also uh, read, um, obviously, um, Arthur Conan Doyle's uh, stories about, uh, one of his stories about um, perhaps the most famous detective, um, Sherlock Holmes. Um, and, and we'll talk a little bit more about uh, what made Sherlock Holmes such a popular uh, 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 an enduring uh, figure in, in, in the crime fiction genre. Um, and then we read various uh, other texts um, from the Golden Age uh, um, period. Uh, we also uh, watch some films. Um, so this semester we watched uh, Vertigo by Alfred Hitchcock, um, a Korean movie called Memories of Murder by Bong Joon-ho. Bong Joon-ho has recently had a lot of success with um, Parasite, uh, which you perhaps have um, come across. Um, Memories of Murder is one of his earliest films, and it's an interesting film because it, 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 um, it's a true crime uh, story. It's based on the so-called Wasang serial murders that took place in the late, late 1980s. Um, and the murderer was never uh, found until last year, actually, uh, 2019, um, they, they finally uh, caught him. Um, the film was made in 2003, at which point um, uh, they hadn't uh, apprehended the, the, the killer. Uh, but it's also an interesting film, I think, because it, uh, it links um, the, um, um, the Pasang case with uh, an important historical event. Uh, in Korea around the late 1980s, uh, which is, of course, the transition from military dictatorship to uh, to democracy. Um, and it creates some very interesting um, um, uh, connections between these two um, events. Uh, we, we, we watched uh, Silence of the Lambs by uh, Jonathan Dem. Uh, it's a film based on a uh, novel by Thomas Harris, uh, uh, by the same name, um, and and it's about um, the notorious uh, serial killer Hannibal, um, and we talked about profiling and and how profiling is is presented in in narrative fiction, um, and one of the uh, the last thing we talked about, the last work we talked about was was the Da Vinci Code. Um, uh, uh, um, 
Dan Brown's bestseller, um, which is it's, it's conspiracy uh, theory uh, about Christianity and, 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 and the development of, of world history. Um, and what's interesting, I think, about um, this film is uh, or, or, or book is that it's um, it's um, it's an interesting combination of uh, conspiracy theory and uh, and the crime fiction um, genre. So so um, <clears throat> so that's essentially what we we do in in in, in the course. Um, I uh, I want to move on to the second point um, uh, today, which which is um, a definition of crime fiction. Uh, I, I think most people have a fairly clear idea about crime fiction, or at least we recognize uh, crime fiction when we see it. Um, and that in spite of the fact that there are many different kinds of uh, crime fiction, uh, many, many different subgenres, um, variations and, and, and versions. And, and I've already talked about a few of Golden Age, uh, Hard Boiled, you could also think about the police uh, novel, um, psychological profiling stories, true crime, espionage, um, historical crimes, and, and, and so on. So there are a lot of different kinds of um, 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 uh, crime uh, or, or ways to present and, 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 and narrate crime fiction. Um, in addition to that, you also find quite a lot of genres that other genres that borrow elements from crime fiction. So you could have, have um, let's say, a science fiction uh, story, but with the detective as, a, as, as the main character, perhaps, or fantasy, um, for that matter. Um, uh, an example here would be um, Philip K. Dick's uh, novel, Do, um, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? Uh, which which uh, borrows a lot from the detective genre, but it's clearly it's clearly a science fiction um, story. You also have uh, another story by Philip K. Dick would be Minority Report from uh, 1956, also uh, a story that takes place in I think 2049. Um, so again, a science fiction story, but. Uh, the plot is really a, uh, it's it's about uh, the solution of a of, of a crime. Um, perhaps you've seen Altered Carbon on Netflix, um, a popular series on uh, on, on uh, a, a popular uh, television series um, on Netflix, uh, which is also a sci-fi story. Um, it's based on a novel by Richard Morgan, um, which came out in two thousand and two. And, uh, and, and that's also really um, a detective story. Um, so we have a lot of different versions of crime fiction and we have um, also other genres um, uh, frequently borrowing elements from crime fiction. Uh, but I think in spite of all that, uh, there's something very uh, consistent about uh, the notion of crime fiction or the definition of crime fiction. Um, in many ways, I think it's remarkable that the genre has uh, remained so consistent throughout history um, and in its various um, sort of unique and particular genre um, expressions. Um, and I would say the most basic definition of crime fiction would be that it's a story that actually consists of two stories. On the one hand, you have the story of the crime, and on the other hand, you have the story of um, the investigation, right? So on the one hand, what really happened, and uh, how did we sort of reconstruct that which happened? Um, and uh, to the extent that we talk about crime fiction, these two elements um, will almost definitely have to be there um, in, in some variation or some form. Um, uh, you could imagine um, stories that would include a lot of crime, 
but would not have the investigative dimension, and in which case uh, I think it would be difficult to define them as crime fiction. So I was thinking about um, Francis Ford Coppola's Godfather series, which um, contains a lot of violence and a lot of uh, crime, but the investigative dimension lacks. So I would say it's not, it's not uh, at least not a, 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 a pure crime fiction story. Um, the focus seemed to be slightly different, um, whereas in crime fiction, uh, there's a very narrow focus on the crime, which is typically absent or uh, hidden uh, and which must be solved. And then, of course, the investigative work carried out by the detective or a police uh, uh, detective or a character who uh, um, fills out the same role, essentially. Um, it's also a highly regulated uh, plot structure that we find in crime fiction. Um, so so it, it has some of the same elements uh, like um, um, so we have a crime and we have a detective, uh, we have clues that uh, at first seem mysterious and incomprehensible. Um, the detective sort of puts everything together and, and, and finally identifies uh, the culprit. And, and, and most crime stories typically end with uh, uh, the criminal confessing and uh, the detective solving uh, the case. So it's a remarkably consistent uh, plot structure that we find all the way back from uh, the earliest crime stories in Edgar Allan Poe and with, uh, Arthur Conan Doyle and, and, and throughout the 20th century and, and into the 21st century. Um, historically, as, I, as I've already mentioned, um, crime fiction as a genre emerges around the 19th uh, the, the mid 19th century. So Edgar Allan Poe writes his stories in in the 1840s, um, and by the 1880s, uh, with Arthur Conan Doyle and his Sherlock Holmes stories, uh, the genre is more or less fully established. All the techniques and the plot devices um, are being formulated around that time, and 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 hence uh, re-employed in. in in later versions in the 20th century, um, and, uh, and 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 during our course, we're going to look uh, take a closer look at this uh, development. Um, now, uh, I think it's important to remember that we uh, we've had stories about crime and punishment throughout history, really uh, going all the way back to biblical times, um, antiquity. Um, but what makes the emergence of crime fiction unique um, and identifiable as a genre um, in the middle of the 19th century, I think, uh, is, is partly this very narrow focus on um, the crime and the solution of the investigative uh, dimension. Um, and partly because uh, this is, there's a shift, a historical shift that occurs in the late 18th and, and, and throughout the 19th century um, towards a, um, a, a different understanding of crime and how to respond to crime. Um, so there's a, a, a more pronounced emphasis on sort of rational scientific uh, principles um, uh, in, 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 in the uh, attempt to identify, uh, identify uh, the one who committed the crime. And today, I think this seems very obvious. Um, what would you do otherwise? Um, but I think it's important to remember that for centuries, um, people have been accused and found guilty uh, of all sorts of things, um, all kind of things, uh, because they were because they were poor, because they were foreigners. Uh, because of their political opinions, because of their religion, because of um, sexual orientation, um, skin color, uh, or simply because they were in the wrong place at the wrong time. And what changes, I think, in the 18th and 19th century is a different understanding of crime and punishment, um, and also um, uh, an, an emphasis on on scientific methods of investigation. So, so we move towards this idea that everyone is uh, equal before the law, 
regardless of your social background. Um, and, and with regards to the scientific uh, rational principles, we find a, a series of important scientific disciplines that um, uh, are reflected in, uh, in, in, in crime fiction. So Edgar Allan Poe, for example, uh, his master detective, Augusta de Bain, um, puts a lot of emphasis on deduction and rational thinking. Um, deduction is, 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 the, uh, is, a, is a logical method by which you take, um, you follow a general principle and from that general principle, you, you can say something about particular instances. Um, but you also find um, uh, pathology, for example, which is the study of causes and effects of, of, uh, of, of disease. Um, psychology, uh, both Dupin, uh, both Detective and, and Doyle, Sherlock Holmes, they are uh, masters of thinking like the criminal, um, in other words, put themselves in the minds of, um, uh, in, uh, of the criminal and, 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 and think like the criminal uh, in order to predict what he or she has done or, or, um, uh, or, or what, they, uh, what they will be doing. Um, so in that sense, uh, psychology becomes a very important scientific uh, discipline. Uh, but there are many others. Um, toxicology, uh, my personal favorite, which is the uh, study of um, poisonous substances. Uh, so if you read it and get the Christie story uh, and uh, you think the coffee tastes a little bit strange, maybe it's because um, uh, it has been um, um, poisoned. Uh, entomology would be another discipline. Uh, entomology is the study of insects, and, uh, and, and the reason why that becomes important uh, is, is, is because insects can tell us a lot about when the person died and uh, the decay of the body and, and so on. Um, you can also think about fingerprinting technology, profiling, um, the importance of, of alibis. Um, where were you Monday night, 3 a.m., for example? Um, you can think about um, interrogation techniques, the importance of reconstructing the crime scene. All of these things become uh, important in, uh, in, in discovering um, and identifying the culprit. Another and, and perhaps much more simple uh, reason why uh, we see the uh, emergence of the crime fiction genre in the mid 18th, uh, 19th century is because um, is because of the establishment of the police as an institution. Um, so the rise of the police force as an institution preserving law and order. Uh, again, I think today that seems uh, to be um, uh, an obvious thing in any any state, but. Um, Historically, in the 1820s and 1830s, there were whole areas within London, for example, that were uh, entirely controlled by criminal gangs or gangs that were not um, in alignment with, uh, with the state. Uh, um, the first organized police force uh, is established in, in England in 1829. So, uh, so you can see it's a... There's, we have an interesting timeline here. So the establishment of the police in 1829, uh, along with a historical shift in terms of the understanding of crime and, uh, and um, um, punishment. And then you have the crime fiction genre uh, emerging in the 1840s uh, and, and, and developing onwards. Um, so that's uh, a broad sketch of, uh, of, of the history of crime fiction. Um, okay, time is running out here. Uh, I want to move on to the third point, uh, why we are so fascinated by crime fiction. Um, so according to Statista, which is uh, an online uh, data company uh, specializing in statistics, uh, well, they did a survey in 2015 and uh, on, on, on uh, the popularity of, of, of literary genres and crime fiction was number one. Um, so we're talking about an incredibly popular genre, uh, perhaps the most popular, popular genre in the world. Um, and the question is, why is it that we're so fascinated 
find this genre. After all, why do we enjoy watching crime and violence, uh, even characters, and all of these things? Um, and perhaps more importantly, why has this fascination remained so consistent ever since uh, the 19th century and into the 21st century? And I think one of the explanations, I think there are many and complex uh, explanations, but one of the things I want to talk about briefly here is um, uh, the detective uh, as a character. Um, and, and by detective, uh, at first we're talking about someone outside the police force, a uh, private investigator. Uh, but you could also say that even in the police novel and, and, and CSI and more contemporary versions of the crime genre, you have characters within the police force, but who more or less fulfill the same role. They are different, they're special, they're smarter than the average police officer, or they are outsiders. Um, um, in any case, I think they fulfill the same kind of function which is to um, essentially <coughs> reach a gap in modern secular society. And by modern secular society, I mean a society in which human laws have replaced um, the notion of absolute or divine justice, and also a society in which rational knowledge replaced the notion of divine truth or the truth of God. So crime fiction emerges around uh, this period of, of, of rapid secularization. Um, uh, it, 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 so, so the mid 19th century, uh, this is roughly around the same time as the German philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche talks about the death of God. Um, and I think uh, so, so, so secularization essentially means um, that people believe less in in the divine powers of God and more in, in human rational uh, powers. And I think in such a, a secular society, the unsolved crime poses uh, a threat, almost a kind of existential crisis, you could say, because it exposes our human limitations and potentially reveals that we live in a meaningless world uh, without any higher moral um, authority. Um, so the unsolved crime questions uh, the very idea of uh, society, I think. Um, and it, it, it turns uh, every one of us into uh, a, uh, a suspect and, and a potential criminal. Um, at the same time, I think it also uh, presents the possibility uh, to each of us um, to, to solve the crime. Um, usually in a good crime story, that's, uh, that's not possible. Um, uh, the ending always has to be surprising to the reader. Otherwise, it, it would be probably not a very satisfying crime story. Uh, and this is where I think the detective comes in. Uh, the detective is a character who can somehow restore our belief in absolute justice and absolute truth in a, an imperfect modern world. Um, so in that sense, uh, the detective sort of restores meaning uh, in, in a secular uh, world. Um, and I don't think we have time, but I was going to talk briefly about uh, a, a true crime example here of an unsolved crime, um, the murder of uh, the Swedish prime minister, Olof Palme. Um, I'll, I'll very briefly uh, summarize uh, this. It's a very interesting case. Uh, Olof Palme was this prime Prime Minister in Sweden, uh, he was murdered. Um, in uh, uh, he, he was murdered on um, at the twenty eighth of February, nineteen eighty six, um, and um, the case has never been solved. The uh, murderer has never been identified uh, or arrested. A lot of people have uh, were. Um, um, uh, interrogated. Uh, it was a huge case, one of the biggest police cases ever. Um, and um, and it became a kind of national trauma in Sweden because of, uh, because of the fact that it was uh, unsolved and it generated a lot of conspiracy theories. Um, so um, uh, you, if you read about the case, you come away with the impression that a lot of people really hated this man 
Um, so, so there's conspiracy theories about the Swedish extreme right wing killing him. Um, you also have a theory about professional assassins hired by international weapons uh, dealers. Um, right, so we have a comment. He was shot when he was walking home from the cinema. That's that's correct. Uh, so he and his wife, Lisbeth Town, they were walking home after uh, a night in the in the cinema, and and he was shot um, uh, in the street. Um, so there are a lot of these theories about why he was killed. Uh, one of the more interesting ones and, and curious ones is that South African agents killed him because um, 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 Olof Palme had been very critical of the, um, uh, the apartheid regime. Um, in fact, the one who uh, proposed that theory was Stieg Larsen, uh, whom you perhaps uh, know from his uh, books, uh, The Girl with the Tattoo Dragon. He's a very famous crime fiction author, but he was also a, an investigative journalist and uh, interested in uh, forms of extremism. Um, and he assembled a huge archive uh, that uh, sadly he never managed to finish and, and he never managed to publish his theory because he, he, he died uh, at a relatively young age. Um, but uh, you can read more about it. It's, it's a really interesting case. The reason why I mention it here is is, is because um, it, it developed into a into a national drama, um, and and still is a national drama, I think. Um, and last week, actually, on the tenth of June, two thousand and twenty, the case was closed after thirty four years, uh, and 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 no significant progress. Uh, and I think the case sort of shows what an unsolved crime does. Uh, it creates a trauma that keeps haunting us. Uh, what really happened? Is the culprit still alive? Is he among us? Is it someone that we know? Was it an organization? Was he killed by the police? Was he killed by um, the authorities that we put our faith in? Uh, and so on. So it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a simmering wound that keeps um, um, uh, uh, um, causing pain and, and, and suffering, I think. Yeah. Um, anyway, I can encourage you to, to uh, read more about it. It's, it's a really fascinating case. Uh, let me move on to the last point today because I think we have to end uh, pretty soon. Why is it important to study crime fiction? Um, and I think <coughs> it's an important question to raise because as I mentioned in the introduction, um, crime fiction has, has often been seen as a popular genre and by implication something that's not really that important to study, at least uh, academically. Um, pulp fiction, um, or in other words, uh, fiction written for mass consumption, uh, printed on cheap, thin paper, hence the name pulp. Um, in other words, literature that was never meant to be preserved, uh, a bit like a newspaper. You read it once and then you throw it out. Uh, so it, it's, it's often been seen as entertainment, um, uh, a kind of uh, pleasurable, uh, activity involving very little cognitive activity, perhaps comparable to um, consuming a hamburger. Um, unlike uh, the uh, refined and aesthetic and, and, and morally enlightening uh, experience of, uh, of reading a classic like Homer's The Iliad um, or Dante's Divine Comedy, which, by the way, we also teach in the English department. Um, but to come back to the question, why is it that we should study crime fiction uh, uh, in university? I think there are several reasons, again. Uh, I want to focus on two basic ones. The first one is that uh, precisely because crime fiction is such a popular genre, perhaps the most popular genre we have in contemporary culture, it constitutes an important um, social uh, barometer um, that can reveal a lot about collective fantasies, anxieties, and desires. Uh, so I think there's an important sociological reason why it's important to understand uh, what's going on in, in crime fiction. Um, the second one, uh, the second reason I think why it's important to study crime fiction has to do with what we're doing in the English department. Um, so what are we doing in the English department? We are primarily, I think, reading texts. Um, reading texts uh, at an advanced level uh, in a sophisticated way, hopefully. Um, 
And that activity, this uh, activity of reading a text uh, in an advanced way, I think resembles the work of the detective. Um, so the detective is trying to solve the crime and we are somehow trying to solve the mystery of the text. Right? What does the text actually uh, mean? What is it trying to say? Um, reading uh, at an advanced level, I think, is all about um, discovering, uh, reconstructing, uh, making connections, interpreting, um, comparing it to other texts. Um, and in a sense, you could compare that work to, uh, to the reconstructive or investigative work of the detective. And much like the detective, I think we also, in some ways, forcing the text to confess right? what, what, is it, uh, what is it trying to say. So in that, uh, in that sense, I think there's something very uh, similar going on uh, cognitively when we talk about detective work and the, uh, the work that we are doing in, in, in a literature um, uh, department or a department that, that teaches literature. Um, yeah, that's that's all I had to say today. Um, we have to end here. I was told I only had 30 minutes. Uh, I can see I've been talking now for 36 minutes. Um, I want to see if, if, if anyone has any questions uh, about the course, or perhaps some of the things that you've been wondering about uh, in connection with the crime, uh, crime genre. Um, if not, uh, you're welcome to, to contact me via email. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Um, so I think, uh, I think I'm gonna end here. Uh, so, so thanks for watching again. And uh, I hope that um, I'm gonna see you again, uh, either in the classroom, on campus, or via Zoom, perhaps. Uh, but, um, in the meantime, uh, please uh, stay safe, everyone, and, uh, and take care. Uh, yeah, thanks very much. Bye-bye.